Mr. President of European Parliament, Martin Schulz. Vice President of the European Commission, Mara Shevchovic. Minister Alan Schotter. Minister Vladislav Bartoshevsky. Dr. Samuel Pissar. Your Excellencies, members of European Commission and the Parliament. Dear friends, survivors of the Shoah, for whom most of all we are gathered here this evening. My dear President Schulz, thank you for your important historical action in officially instituting this event as an annual commemoration in the European Parliament under the patronage of the Presidency. The European Jewish Congress is honored to partner you in this endeavor. It has been several years that we have been gathering here to commemorate the memory of the Shoah, the lowest point of Jewish history, and also the lowest point of European history. In the midst of that hate and murder, there were also sparks of love and basic human decency, as well as remarkable acts of personal heroism. Tonight we remember in particular the heroic resistance of the Jewish fighters of the Warsaw Ghetto and the murdering of the largest Jewish community in Europe, men and women who knew they were going to die yet continued to resist. The men who led that fight in the Hetta Mordechai Anilevich knew better than most of them what waited him and his comrades. Let me quote the words from his last letter. It is impossible to describe the conditions under which the Jews of the ghetto are now living. Only a few will be able to hold out the remainder will die sooner or later. Their fate is decided. In almost all the hiding places in which thousands are concealing themselves, it is not possible to light a candle for lack of air. The day after, writing this letter, Mordechai was killed, but his candle of heroism continues to light our lives even today. The fight against tyranny is not only with arms. Raoul Wallenberg, too, fought tyranny, risking his life to save tens of thousands of Hungarian Jews, and we are proud to honor his memory tonight among all riches of the nations. But while we remember these heroes of Europe for their brave resistance, we must not forget the indisputable fact that for many years, most citizens and all governments of this very continent did not resist and ignored the clear warning signs leading up to the Shoah. The sad truth is that the resistance of the Warsaw Hatter fighters was eventually necessary because of the lack of resistance of others. In the words of the great British philosopher Edmund Burke, all is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And I can add, they paid the maximum price for more than 40 million lives. Europe was blind in those times 
to dangerous winds of hate and extremism and six million Jews paid for that with their lives while Europe paid the carnage of World War II. We cannot afford to close our eyes again, for the signs are all there. In 2012, the world and Europe in particular witnessed a huge rise of anti-Semitic incidents. A study carried out in Europe in 2012 revealed that anti-Semitism raised from 17 percent in the United States up to 63 percent in Hungary. In France, which has a Jewish community of more than half a million people, the largest in Europe and the third largest in the world, manifestations of the anti-Semitism were up by almost 50 percent in 2012. The Islamic extremist in Toulouse murdered in cold blood three children and a teacher at Jewish school. The Jewish community of Malmo is living in fear, which forces its members to flee the city. Its community center has been firebombed. Its members have been attacked on the streets. Dozens of official complaints have been filed with Malmo's police, and yet not a single prosecution, let alone conviction, has been brought for anti-Semitic hate crimes in the city over the period now stretching for more than two years. We can't ignore and accept the political parties like Jobbik calling for compiling lists of Jews in Budapest. The children and grandchildren of those to whom Raoul Wallenberg handed out Swedish passport to save their lives in the same city just 70 years ago. Your big party, which is the third largest group representing its country in the European Parliament, with one out of every seven Hungarian members in this building. Do Europe really recognize what means the demonstrations with swastika-type symbols in Athens, the capital of the country, where 81% of the Jewish population was wiped out by the Nazis? The country where today an openly fascist group holds 6% in the seats of the Greek parliament while arguing that the Nazis must murdered 30 times less Jews than was established by the Nuremberg International Tribunal. This is the time of gathering storm clouds. Today is a day of mourning for over 6 million Jews murdered by Nazis. This loss is irrevocable in all senses. Today, Jews make up just 0.2% of Europe's population, seven times less than before the war. While the world's population has tripled since 1945, the world Jewish population remains just 70% of the figure of 1939. This year we learned from census taken in Israel that the figure of 6 million Jews has been reached in the Jewish state, where 50% of the world's Jews once lived in Europe. Today, more than half live in Israel. Please listen carefully to those figures. Promise, I will not overload you. According to International Atomic Agency, Iran had five years ago totally 2,000 centrifuges for uranium enrichment. Today, only in Natanz, about 9,000, 
In Fordo, it's a factory, 80, 90 meters below the surface, only three last months doubled and reached the number of 2,100. As a president of Luxembourg Forum on preventing the nuclear catastrophe, the largest expert institution in the world, I can assure you that less than one, in one year, Iran will be ready to produce, deliver, and commercialize nuclear weapons, included terroristic organizations. Included, of course, everything concerning warheads and means of delivery. What more of a warning does the world need? Who is in Middle East protecting Europe, but not the state of Israel? And who is a target of regular boycotts in Europe, but the state of Israel? One of the most democratic states, according to the highest European democratic standards. Six million Jews are once again in the firing line, facing the state which openly educates its population that the Holocaust never happened, the state which possesses the means to carry out its threats and bring the Holocaust about for the second time. This is not 1943, and it is not even 1933, but it could be well 1929, with a terrible economic depression with extremists marching in the streets and sitting in the parliaments, with a lack of hope in the future and lack of confidence in mainstream politicians. Holocaust was the world tragedy and the tragedy of European Jewry. On behalf of this Jewry, on behalf of European Jewry, I today as a president of European Jewish Congress, warning Europe again, wake up immediately and limit, please, your conventional tolerance, first of all, to racism, extremism, anti-Semitism everywhere, from streets to the parliaments. To conclude, very soon, in January 2015, we are going to commemorate the 70th anniversary of Auschwitz liberation. We owe to Europeans who died and who will live after us to make the largest possible international format of this event. And I ask on behalf of Holocaust victims, survivors, and future Europeans, the European Parliament and the President of Poland and its government, through you, dear President Schulz, and through you, Minister Bartoszewski, to support strongly this event. Few months ago, in this very room, we with President Martin Schulz granted the Golden Medals of Tolerance to Presidents of Serbia and Croatia for reconciliation progress in Balkans. On this occasion, I presented to Martin the model of European tolerance law. I have a dream to see soon this model law to be fully and democratically discussed and finally accepted by this parliament just nearby in the General Assembly Room to protect our future, to stop any new possible Holocaust. Thank you.